Hey everyone, let's take a look at our chapter four test review. It's all about linear functions. Ready? First question. What is the slope intercept form of the equation with a slope of negative four and a y intercept of five? The questions like this don't get any easier. Okay, slope intercept form looks like y equals mx plus b. And if I straight up tell you the slope is negative four, that goes in for m. And then I tell you the y intercept of five, that means my b is positive five. That's it. There's literally nothing else to do. Don't get that kind of question wrong. Next one, number two, what is the slope intercept form of the equation with a slope of two and goes through the origin? So if my slope is two and it goes through the origin zero, zero, well, that would mean that my y-intercept b is zero. So my equation is y equals two x plus zero, but plus zero is silly. It's just y equals two x. Number three, write the equation line in slope intercept form that has a slope of negative three so my m is negative 3, and goes to the point 0, negative 5. Now questions like this are the absolute best because we know what the slope is. The slope is negative 3. I put an x. Now, when the x value is 0, that means the y-coordinate is the y-intercept. This 0, negative 5 is my b, and so minus 5 is at the end. It's only when there is a y-intercept given as an ordered pair, when x is 0, that you don't actually have to do any math. Number four, what is the equation of the line shown in the graph? Well, if I'm looking at a graph, I need to know two things. I need to know my slope. I need to know my y-intercept. So y equals mx plus b. So when I look at this equation, I would say to myself, okay, I see that this graph is going from this point down three to the right two. So when I'm looking at this graph, I would say, oh, my slope is negative three over two. It's going down three to the right two, down three to the right two. The y-intercept is where it's crossing the y-axis, and it's crossing the y-axis at a positive four. I would know if I was looking at my answer choices also, this graph is decreasing. I better not pick a graph, an equation rather, that has a, negative, a positive slope because it's definitely going to be negative. And I also notice that my y-intercept is crossing at a positive four. So not only should my slope be negative, but it should be crossing at a positive y-intercept, and there's actually only one answer choice that is, even has that in it. Number five, write the equation line in slope-intercept form, that should say form, y equals mx plus b, that has a slope of 0.5 and goes to the point for negative five. So when this happens and you're given a slope in an ordered pair, and we can't tell from the ordered pair what the y-intercept is, we do have to do the math. So ready, my, y, my 4 is my x, my negative 5 is my y, my equation is y equals mx plus b. My job is to plug these three numbers in carefully. So my negative 5 is my y equals, my slope is 0 0.5, times my x-coordinate of 4 plus b. This ends up becoming negative 5 equals, well, half of 4 is 2 plus b. Subtract 2 on both sides, solve for b, and we end up getting negative 7. So that means my equation is y equals 0.5x minus 7. All right, guys, number 6. Write the equation line in slope-intercept form that goes to the points 4, negative 8, and negative 1, 2. So I have 4, negative 8, negative 1, 2. I'm not given the slope or the y-intercept. First thing I can figure out, though, is my slope. So I'm going to do 2 minus a negative 8 over negative 1 minus 4. I end up getting 2 minus a negative 8 means 2 plus 8, which is 10. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5, and 10 over negative 5 is negative 2. So I know that my slope is definitely negative 2. I see two of my answer choices have a slope of negative 2, so I need to go further. Now I'm going to take the slope and the ordered pair. Wouldn't matter which one you choose. I'm going to choose the first one. My x is my 4. My y is my negative 8. So I have y equals mx plus b. My y is my negative 8 equals my slope is negative 2 times my x-coordinate of 4 plus b. I end up getting negative 8 equals negative 8 plus b. Add 8 on both sides, and we get b equals 0. I never want you to think you did something wrong if you got b equals 0. b can totally be 0. So my final answer is y equals my slope was negative 2. x plus 0 is silly. My answer is just y equals <clears throat> negative 2x. Awesome. Oops. Okay, number seven. Write the equation in standard form. 
All right, so we have 5y equals 4x minus 2. Now, don't forget, standard form looks like ax plus by equals c. That means my x and y are on the same side of the equation. When I look at this equation, x is on one side, y is on the other. They're not on the same side. There's more than one way to do this, okay? More than one way to do this. Let me show one way here, 5y equals 4x minus 2. One way would be to move the 4x to the other side to group the 4x and the 5y together. So I get negative 4x plus 5y equals negative 2. But one of the rules in standard form is that a is not supposed to be negative. So if I have a negative a value, I need to divide everything by negative 1 to get 4x minus 5y equals 2. 4x minus 5y equals 2. Another way to do this problem would be to say, okay, 5y equals 4x minus 2. Let me send the 5, the 2, I could do either one. I could send the 2 to the other side and have 5y, e 5y plus 2 equals 4x. And then say, oh, why don't I then send the 5y to the same side as my 4x? And I end up getting 2 equals 4x minus 5y, which is identical to this answer here. They mean the same thing. So either strategy is a great strategy. Number eight, given the equation, find the slope and ordered pair. So point slope form looks like y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. And here in this equation, I have y minus three equals two times x plus four. Now it's very obvious that my slope is two and actually in all the answer choices, the slope is two. If I see y sub one minus three, I'm sorry, y minus three, then that means my y coordinate of my ordered pair is three. Because if I plug a three back into this equation, y minus three would make it look like y minus three. If I see x plus four, well, if x was four and I plug a four in, x minus four would look like x minus four, but it doesn't look like x minus four, it's x plus four. So the only way to plug in an x value to make it positive four is if the x was negative. So if I had x minus a negative 4, that's how I would get positive 4. And so negative 4, 3 is my point. So a slope of 2 and then negative 4, 3. What we should be noticing is that it's opposite signs. If you see x plus 4, the x coordinate's negative 4. y minus 3, the y coordinate's positive 3. Number 9, write the equation in point slope form that has a slope of 2. So m equals 2 and goes to the point 4, negative 7. So ready, my formula is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. This would be y minus my y coordinate is negative 7 equals my slope of 2 times x minus the x coordinate of 4. The only thing I have to clean up here is y minus a negative 7 really means y plus 7 and that's what my equation should look like. y plus 7 equals 2 times x minus 4. Same skill, number 10. Write the equation in point slope form that has a slope of 0 and goes to the point negative 5, 3. <clears throat> so my slope is 0, so m is 0, and then my point is negative 5, 3. So this would look like y minus my y coordinate of 3 equals my slope of 0 times x minus a negative 5. So now this will look like y minus 3. 0 times anything is just 0. That's it. When the slope is 0, you have nothing there. That's it. Number 11, rewrite in slope-intercept form. So if I take this equation in point slope form, y minus 4 equals 2 times x plus 3. To make it look like y equals mx plus b, because that's my goal, slope-intercept form, Notice y equals mx plus b does not have any parentheses, and y is by itself. So I'm going to first distribute, get rid of my parentheses. So this is y minus 4 equals 2x plus 6. I'm then going to get y by itself by adding 4. And if I add 4 on both sides, I get y equals 2x plus 10. That's it. Number 12, what is the equation of the line with an undefined slope? So undefined slopes, we need to remember undefined. Undefined slopes are for vertical lines. Um, a slope of zero is a horizontal line. This would look like a positive slope. This would look like a negative slope. There's no such thing as a slope that's so steep that would ever make it vertical. We don't have a numerical value for it, so we call it undefined. 
When I look at the first equation, that slope is definitely negative 3, not undefined. y equals negative 3? Well, that means there's a slope of 0, because if you don't see an x, that means there's a slope of 0, 0x, zero we just don't see it. x equals 2 is the equation of a vertical line, and then y equals 2x, well, that slope is 2. So the first equation has a slope of negative 3, second equation has a slope of 0, last equation has a slope of 2, so the only one remaining is x equals 2. Every x equals a number equation is a vertical line. Number 13, which equation is parallel to y equals 4x minus 1? So parallel lines, we need to remember parallel lines have the same slope. So I actually don't even need to do any math in this problem. I just have to say, oh, if I see this equation, y equals 4x minus 1, my slope is 4. So any equation that also has a slope of 4 is going to be parallel to it. The only equation here that has a slope of 4 is y equals 4x plus 3. Whereas number 14, perpendicular, so perpendicular lines, perpendicular, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. Negative reciprocal slopes. Or you can say opposite reciprocal, okay? Opposite. You change the sign, flip the fraction. So when I look at this equation, y equals um, x minus 7, and y equals x minus 7, I know that my slope is a positive 1 because there's really a 1 there. So the perpendicular slope is the negative reciprocal. I would change the sign. The reciprocal of 1 is just 1, and so my perpendicular slope is just a negative 1. There's only one equation here that has a slope of negative 1, and that would be perpendicular. Number 15. Number 15 says, uh, write the equation line that is parallel to y equals 2x minus 3 y equals 2x minus 3, and goes to the point 8, 0. Okay, so if I'm going to go ahead and do this one, write the equation line that's parallel to y equals 2x minus 3, and goes to the point 8, 0. So parallel lines have the same slope. So when I look at this equation, I'm going to use a slope of 2. And now I need it to go through this point, x, y. So I have y equals mx plus b. I'm going to take my slope in the ordered pair. So y is 0. My m is 2 times the x-coordinate of 8 plus b, I end up getting 0 equals 2 times 8 plus b, oh, silly, 16 plus b, subtract 16 on both sides, and I end up getting b equals negative 16. So my equation is y equals, the slope was 2, x minus 16. Awesome. Okay, number 16, write the equation line that's perpendicular to 3x plus y equals 8 that goes to the point negative 3, 5. Well, first of all, I need to know the slope of this equation. So I'm going to put it in slope-intercept form. I'm going to make it look like y equals negative 3x plus 8. Okay, so now that it's in that form, I can easily say, okay, my slope is negative 3. Then I need to figure out my perpendicular slope. My perpendicular slope would be change the sign flip the fraction. Negative 3 becomes positive 3. Flip the fraction, I get positive 1 third. So now I want to take the slope and the ordered pair of negative 3, 5 that I'm given. My negative 3 is my x, my y is my 5, and I'm going to plug them in to solve for b to write my equation. My y is 5 equals my slope of 1 third times my x of negative 3 plus b. This ends up being 5 equals negative 1 plus b. Add 1 on both sides and we end up getting 6 equals b. And so my equation is y equals, it's the one-third slope that I was using, x plus 6. Awesome. Number 17, the graph of data that has a strong negative correlation means the points generally create a horizontal line, they create a vertical line. As the x values increase, the y values increase. As x values increase, the y values decrease. Negative correlation looks like this. It looks like a scatter plot where the points are generally decreasing. So as the x values increase, the y values are generally decreasing. Okay, As the x values increase, the y values generally decrease. If it was as they increase, the y values increase, that would be a positive correlation. A horizontal line through data means that there's no correlation, they're not fluctuating, and a vertical line, that's not going to be an equation of a line for data, although if it was, and again, it's just going to be no correlation. Number 18, if you were to plot the data points of negative 2, 3, 
negative one five zero six three ten four nine, you will be able to say that the data shows a okay. So let's do this. So I'm going to make a little sketch. I'm not going to really plot all the points perfectly. I'm just going to count by twos. That's out to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 10. Negative 10. Oops. Okay. So negative 2, 3. So negative 2, 3, negative 1, 5. Zero six three ten four nine. I think that's pretty obvious right away that this graph is generally going up, so that would be a positive correlation. Inverse inverses are so easy, you're just switching the x and the y values. So if I gave you that um, set of ordered pairs, nine three, the inverse would be three nine, negative five four, the inverse would be four negative five. In the last ordered pair, if I gave you two negative seven, the inverse is just negative seven, two. You don't mess with the signs. You just literally switch the X and Y values. Three, nine, four, negative five, seven, negative seven, two. Last question, find the inverse of F of X equals two X minus four. So first step in calculating the inverse is to replace F of X with Y. So it'd be Y equals two X minus four. Second step, switch the X and Y. So X equals 2y minus 4. Set third step, solve for y. So to get y by itself here, I would add 4 on both sides. I get x plus 4 equals 2y. I would then, to get y by itself, divide everything by 2. If I do that, I get y equals, let's see, x over 2 is 1 half x. 4 over 2 is just 2. And then the last step is replace the y with the inverse function notation. So the inverse function notation equals 0.5x or 1 half x plus 2. That's it. Good luck on your test. Bye.